You can say a lot of things about footy star Sam Newman, but you'd never call him a quitter. On the plus side, there are the 300 games for Geelong and his starring role on the footy show. On the minus, his failures in love, life and business. Now he's fighting for his life. Three weeks ago, he went in for a routine blood test and came out with the devastating news that he had prostate cancer. It was so bad, the doctors decided to operate immediately. And through it all, his mate Eddie Maguire has been at his side, especially for the crucial verdict, whether Sam would live or die. This is Sam Newman as you've never seen him before. My heart's beating at 300. Yeah. I can feel it. <laughs> Quiet, sick and vulnerable. I'm fretting, Ed, and uh, I'd be no different from anyone else. If anyone says they don't fret or get anxious about this before they go in, um, I'd like to meet them. A cancer in Sam's prostate threatens to kill him. I'm going to make you feel nice and sleepy now. Today, everyone's hoping radical surgery will save my mate's life. Thanks, Sam. Watch it down from here, mate. Yeah. Thank Thanks you very you. much. See you on the other side. We'll see you at some stage, Good I hope. Yeah, Good thank you. Good luck. Out on Port Phillip Bay, this is more like the Sam Newman we're used to. This is fantastic. Out there is Shangri-La. Out there is the Garden of Eden, Ed. That yeah. is, just go as far as you like out there, through the heads and on the way to the Antarctic. The most controversial TV star of the last 20 years, this is a rare glimpse into his private world. If you want any uh, chicken, nice tomato yeah. and lettuce roll, it's in here, or else you can wait for the mirt. Out here we see the Sam Newman I know, generous host, and a loyal friend. Oh, that's nectar. Well, you, you want us to go in, do you? At 62, he's an absolute specimen and looks as fit as they come. No, 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 no. Making it all the harder to believe that in truth, he's a very sick man. It's a very levelling experience, isn't it? Yeah, it brings you right back to the field, Ed. I'd be less than honest if I didn't say that that can take all your vanity away just in an instant. The diagnosis three weeks ago has been an absolute bolt from the blue. Sam had no symptoms, no family history, and had no idea he was ill until he went for a routine blood test to check his cholesterol. He said, have you had any symptoms? Yep. And uh, I said, I've had none of that. He said, it's very fortuitous that you went in to have your blood checked because usually the people who don't have symptoms, by the time they do, it's too late. Surgery consists of a procedure called radical prostatectomy. Dr. Lawrence Harewood is so concerned at the progress of the cancer that surgery is the only option. And we sew then the bladder to the urethra directly. The prostate has to be removed immediately. You're confident? Uh, I should be, I suppose. Cancer is a scary word, but, you know, at least we are with Sam in with a chance with him. Nothing's guaranteed, but I think his chances are good. Yeah. All right, mate. Good luck, Lawrence. Thank you, Eddie. We'll be trying very hard for Sam, I can promise you. It does go through your mind uh, just where it's all going to end, and uh, we don't want to make this too dramatic or hokey or too schmaltzy, but it does go through your mind, certainly. You might feel a bit hot going up the vein in your arm. This is life or death. Sam won't survive unless all the cancer is removed. See, there's a big vein running along there. That's where the nerves are. And there can be serious side effects, impotence and incontinence. Peter, you can grab that stuff now. Yeah, that's good. To limit the damage, Dr. Harewood and his team at the Epworth Hospital use a remarkable robot device called the Da Vinci machine. Push it right in. Yeah, do that. Perfect. Ah, oh, lovely. Look at that. This is an amazing machine. It's like something out of Star Wars. 
It allows the surgeon the greatest amount of flexibility for the least amount of intrusion. And that's going to give my mate Sam his greatest chance of being OK. When faced with these things, your body goes, your mind goes in with a completely different gear. And it says, OK, well, you think you'll be scared when you hear about it, but you just are not because it's futile being scared. John Newman coming in using the drop putt. Oh, it's dropping, but it looks like being on line. Sam has built an entire career out of being fearless, both on the footy field and, more famously, off it. Watch out! When Liz Hayes met Sam a few years ago, he was making no apologies for who he is. Some of the words that I read were used, that were used to describe you included clown, boofhead, arrogant, sexist, biased, bore, unmitigated pig. Unmitigated pig. I think I'd uh, draw the line at that. The rest are pretty fair. You've never, <laughs> shit. You haven't cleaned up the line. And even last weekend, just days after his diagnosis and facing the greatest challenge of his colourful life, Sam was still the man. If everyone would just like to slip into a life jacket, I'll just sit up and put the fire out. Sam, you're supposed to get cremated afterwards. <laughs> Sam only confided in a very small group of family and friends, including his mate of 45 years, Kevin King. I've gone through all the highs and lows with Sam. I've gone through all his marriages and his girlfriends and, and all the rest of the problems he's had. And, and if I thought anything was happened to Sam, I'd be absolutely shattered by it. And... Give me those. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Shit. This operation has some serious side effects, like impotence. Has he thought about this? Ed, he's had a real laugh about that. He said, look, I've had a really good innings in that department. <laughs> and he said, so if the worst comes to the worst, he said, I'll cop that, he said. But he won't be phased by that? I think it'll keep him out of a lot of trouble, to tell you the <laughs> truth. It won't worry me, because I think the last time I exercised the option was possibly in the late 90s. But I think the sex drive <laughs> drops off just a tad in the uh, early stages. That's his prostate there. If we go too close to the prostate, we leave cancer. If we go too close to the nerves, we, 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 we destroy them. This is delicate stuff, cutting around the nerves that control the penis. And in there, do that, that's perfect. The prostate sits between the urethra and the bladder. When it's removed, it leaves a gap that must be bridged by a catheter until it heals. All right, catheter back now. This is the critical moment in the operation. This is Sam's prostate. It's about to be removed. Then the urethra will be stitched onto the bladder and hopefully everything will be OK. So that looks really good to me. I'm very happy with that. So we're going to put that in a bag. Looks like a nice specimen, Peter. The prostate is normally the size of a walnut. Sam's is twice that, swollen with cancer. You can see it's a really nice clean specimen. We've got all the tissue, we've got no extra tissue on the prostate. You can sort of feel it's hard inside, which is wet, so we can feel the cancer inside there. But I would be, I mean, I'm delighted with that specimen. There we are, that's a bit of Sam Newman. There it is, there's a, it's not the first time that a small organ has got him in trouble either. Is that right? Oh, I'm, yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna comment on that. Uh, <laughs> okay, we're out. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men. Every day, 32 blokes are told they have the disease. Nearly 3,000 men die a year. The same number of women die from breast cancer. It's not fair, but I guess that's the nature of it. There is a lifetime risk of any man getting cancer of the prostate of 10%. So it can happen to anybody. Everyone else thinks he should have played was, except you. was almost as silly as yeah. Elizabeth Taylor saying, ouch, on the last wedding night. Sam's great mate, AFL superstar Ted Whitten, was also 62 when he got prostate cancer. By the time they found it, it was too late. Ted was a really tough, strong player and had plenty of injuries and suffered plenty of pain. He probably had the symptoms but thought it'd be pretty weak to go to a doctor after all I've been through. There's just something wrong with me. I don't know what it is. I don't know if Ted did that, but I got a feeling by the time he realised there was something wrong, it was too late. And that's the message then, That isn't is it? the message. Just don't ignore the fact that people say you should have a regular checkup after you're a certain age. Sam, can you open your eyes for us, please? That's good.
After five hours on the operating table, Sam is battered and in a lot of pain. You done, mate? All fixed. Deep breaths for us, please. It's brutal surgery. It'll be days before he's back on his feet and before he knows if the cancer has spread. It all went well. I'm sure all of us at some stage have said, God, if you get me through this, yeah. do you think you'll change your persona a little bit? The well, public persona. I can't say that, Ed. I mean, you can't be something you're not. Uh, just not sure how this will all turn out. And uh, when it does, you can't tell how you'll face the rest of uh, what life you've got left. It's been a long two and a half weeks. The longest two and a half weeks of my life. I lie here wondering what in the hell is going to happen. Sam, good, night, good to see you again. How are you going? Finally, the moment of truth, when Sam finds out if the cancer spread beyond the prostate, the difference between life and death. Now, Sam, we got your pathology back today, OK? And I'm delighted to say it looks fantastic, all right? Just what yes. does that mean, Doc? What that means is that the cancer is just inside the prostate, that it hasn't gone out through the capsule, and we've got it all out cleanly. So, Sam, I reckon we nailed it, all right? Uh, it looks good. Well, that is the best news I've ever had in my life. I was it's the best the result first possible. First Sam's life. cancer has been caught in time. His life's been saved because of that initial yeah, blood test. That's just That's what would known, uh, be known as the supreme reprieve, I reckon. Sam's exposed himself on TV before, but never like this. By sharing his story so bravely, he hopes other blokes will get the message. It's good. Please don't take your life for granted, because uh, you never know. It mightn't be there to take for granted if you do. So face up to it and do it. Be tested. Be tested and enjoy life. It makes you enjoy it all the more. It makes it more relevant.